and welcome to my Black Widow wig tutorial. This is based on our hairstyle from the Black Widow movie. As you can see, I already have a wig for her. I absolutely love to reuse wigs that I have. It saves money and I'm really confident that I can revamp wigs and I'll actually show you that in another tutorial. This wig has been previously cut and thinned out. I'll also show you another tutorial on how to thin out a wig. The first thing that a lot of people overlook is actually the hairline. As you can see, the hairline of this wig is round. Black Widow actually has a sort of widow's peak in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away some of these hairs from the front. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your wig's straight if you're using a mannequin head. So I usually check the back and see where it stops. And then I pin it to the top. Firstly, I'm changing the parting as it's slightly off centre. So I use my tail comb and pull some of the hair over onto the other side. The hair should part on the right hand side. So as you can see, this hair is not going to sit where I want it to sit. That's because wigs are thermoplastic, you need to add heat if you want to change the shape. This area of the wig feels like it wants to fall back the way. So all I do is I take my steamer, take my tail comb and add some heat to the root. This pushes the root in a different direction and tells it where it wants to go. And you can see it obviously flattens out right away onto the other side. To change up the hairline, I use a set of tweezers. So I sort of know what shape I want to do the hairline. I want the middle to have the widow's peak and these bits at the sides to be taken further back. So at the side of the hairline, I'm actually just pulling out some of these strands. So I very slowly just keep pulling out the hairs and it means you can always see and observe what you're doing. Always take a step back and check. Don't just go all in and then realise you made a huge mistake and then you've lost a bit of your wig that you wanted to keep. Sometimes it's hard to tweeze from the root, you just have to keep trying. Some of the hairs will split, but just tweeze them again and they'll come out. I've seen some people just go straight in with scissors. I do prefer using the tweezers as I think you get a bit more control and it just looks a bit more natural. You don't want to cut too much off and then realise that you've just made a huge mistake. So yeah, I would definitely use the tweezers, even though it takes a bit longer. So after I've tweezed away a tiny little bit of this hairline, I'm actually taking another bit of hair and pulling it over. This is to make the incline look a bit more dramatic, so it looks a bit more like a widow's peak. And then if you need to, you can always steam that bit again. I realised that section was a little bit too thick, so I just changed it up and pulled a little bit over and pulled some of it back the way. Once you've got a bit of lace showing with no hairs on it, you can just cut away that lace. I always cut my lace fronts right up to the hairline, so it's not really an issue for me. You'll see a lot of drag queens and other cosplayers will keep a bit of the lace on their wig. It's really up to personal choice. There's not really a right or wrong. Some people feel like the wig doesn't stretch as much if you keep some of the lace. So after I've snipped a little bit away, you can see it's so subtle, but we've got a slight widow's peak there. After each stage of this tutorial, I really would go and put the wig on and check it in a mirror. I did do this. It means you can look at your hairline and look at the wig's hairline and you can work out if you can take some away or not because even though you want to change the hairline, you might end up seeing some of yours underneath, depending on what your hairline's like. I wanted the hairline to be a bit further back on this side, and I discovered that, yes, I, I had a, a window to be able to do that. There was like a small triangle I could get away with taking away. So that's what I'm doing at the corner here. And that will actually widen the forehead slightly. It's really important to check reference photos when you do this. It means you can regularly check it, put, put the wig on your head, look at the photo and see what you think. Anytime I get a little bit of lace left, I just cut that off. Obviously, if you're not cutting off your lace, you would just tidy up the, the root. You can see how much I've actually taken off here. I took off quite a bit. So you can see it does look like the hairs come back just at that point. And what I can do on the other side, even though you can't see it as much, is I'm going to take that back as well. Because it is a widow's peak, so it would be further back on both sides. So after going in with the tweezers and cutting the lace, you can see that I've got a little widow's peak at the front now. So now we're happy with the hairline and I always like to style my wigs starting from a straight style. To get wigs straight, I could honestly swear by steaming it. We obviously need heat to change the shape of the thermoplastic wig. Using a steamer is brilliant here. If you were to use dry heat, it just does not have that effect. I've seen people use straighteners on wigs and things like that, but it's just not as... Steaming it's grey and the heat just really penetrates into the hair. It stays a bit hotter for longer. It's also important to make sure your wig doesn't have any tugs in it at this point. If, you, if your wig does have tugs, you want to brush it from the bottom upwards and you want to make sure there's no tugs in it. So 
So here we have our straight wig ready for styling. After looking at reference images of Black Widow, her hair looks a bit tousled and curled, so I'm going to curl this wig fully and then relax it. To curl a lot of my wigs, I like to use a curling wand. If you can find a curling wand that enables you to slide the hair off it, that is absolutely ideal. You'll see why soon. I also wear heat protective gloves. This is because we'll be making contact with the wand and you don't want to burn yourself. So what I do is I take up roughly an inch section and then wrap it around the wig from the front. I'm angling the wand downwards and pulling the hair around. One thing that's really important when doing this is actually the direction of the way that you're curling. So I could have curled this hair forward, but I'm doing it back. And I always usually do that at the hairline. And it means that your hair's not fallen into your face, it's fallen like away from your face. After about 15 seconds, I take the wand out very slowly and keep the curl in my hand. If I was to let this hair go, it would go straight because it's not set yet. It needs to cool to set. If you do what I'm doing and hold the hair in the hand, you'll obviously have to wait longer because it will take longer to cool. You can sort of blow on it, that's what I do. If you can manoeuvre yourself to pick up a hair dryer, you could obviously use the cool setting, but sometimes it can blow the curl out of your hand. So just to warn you about that, that's now set. If you let it go, you'll see the curl has kept. So what I do is I take another section of hair and I'm going to curl it in the same direction. I'm curling it in the same direction because it's still part of the front, I feel, and I just feel like those sections should be going backwards. So now I hold it in my hand again, blowing it a bit. And then let it go. I do this for the whole of the front section and then I use a clip to move that hair out of the way. This allows me to work on the hair underneath. Again, because this is at the front of the wig, I'm angling the hair backwards and pulling it round the curling wand. You can see why the heat protective gloves are really important here, because you do have to hold that hair in place or you'll lose the curl. Also, you'll see that the glove was underneath that section there and it means you can pull it straight out really easily. So here's two of the end sections that are curled back and what I'll show you now is I'm going to curl the other way. The reason I decided to put some of the sections curling the other way is because natural hair doesn't really all go in the same direction. So instead of curling back the way like this, I'm going to curl forward. So you're pulling the hair forward and then you're curling it around the wand as before. It's always important to angle the wand down the way Otherwise, the top of the curl might end up looking a bit strange. As you can see, it can sometimes be difficult to wrap it round. So don't be worried if you're finding any difficulties because I find it difficult too sometimes. <laughs> okay, so pull the curling wand out, hold it in my hand, let it cool and release. So when we section the hair, we obviously want to keep the other hair out the way. But another reason you can see is because I'm wearing these gloves, the hair's starting to get a bit static and it really stops all those static bits just getting in the way. You can see that I'm angling this one backwards again and then I'll do that all the way around. So I'll do like alternate curling forward, curling back. What's also important to look at from reference photos is how big the curls are. This is a 25mm barrel and it's actually 8 inches long. This curling wand is actually from Mark Hill where you can change all the ends of the barrel. It's fantastic. So you just buy the actual end of the tong and I've got different attachments for it. The curl really depends on the diameter of the barrel and the shape of the barrel because you get different shapes of barrel. They're not always all uniform like this. So with my tutorials, you'll end up seeing I do like lots of different types of techniques for these curls. If you don't have a tong, you could also use um, rollers for your hair and what you would do is put the rollers in and put it into the sink and then fill it with hot water. The hot water will set the curl, you leave it to dry and then when you take them out, the wig will be curly. The reason I'm using a wand is because I get instant results. I don't have to wait for a wig to set to dry and this won't be the final look either. Like I'll be, I'll be making this hair more relaxed. So after curling this whole side, you can see that this is what the curls look like. So again, I'm doing the back, 
Again, I'm wrapping the hair in alternative directions, sometimes pointing back, sometimes pointing forward, and I always hold the curling wand downwards. Holding the hair and have a little party. <laughs> then release the hair. I don't know what I was listening to there, but it, was, it must have been a good song. You might find I've been positioning myself differently throughout these whole videos as well. Sometimes if you stand behind the wig or at the side of the wig, sometimes if you kneel on the floor, it gets easier. Just position yourself in the way that feels the most natural and comfortable to you. One other thing that's important is obviously you have this wand and it's really hot. You need to have somewhere to put it in case of an emergency or if you want to put it down in between the curling. Um, I actually have a table that's kind of ceramic, I think, and it takes heat well. Um, you could get a silicon mat. Silicon mats would take heat well. It's what you would use if you're like using warbler and things like that. So just a heads up on that. Make sure you've got somewhere you're going to put it that's not going to burn like a table or a kitchen counter or something like that. So we've worked our way around to the other side and you can see I've started to curl back the way in this front section. That whole section will all be facing the back. Something I always think about when I'm making costumes or styling wigs and things like that, I always think about the person and what they're doing. So like obviously this is Black Widow and she's fighting all the time and stuff so this does not have to be a perfect look. Like in my mind if I'm like right I'm doing a perfect style like I'll, pe I'll be much more involved in all of the details. But for her, it's just like her hair's kind of tousled and she's been fighting and I wouldn't worry too much about it, getting it so perfect. Just as an alternative, I'll show you this. So I took the tong out and you can actually just pinch it between your fingers if you want. If you find that that's easier for you, you could do that every time you take your curl out. Now the wig is fully curled and it's looking a bit Bridgerton with those ringlets. So we're going to separate these sections and make them smaller first. What to do is just take a section and just split it with your hands. They should come apart quite easily. If they do end up tugging at the bottom, pull it from the bottom first. I just work my way around the wig doing this. Obviously these curls are a bit tight. I want to loosen the curls, so I'm going to use some dry heat. It means it won't be too overbearing, but it will be just enough heat just to kind of relax the shape that we've got. If you were to steam this, it would just go straight again. But dry heat means it will just change the shape very slightly. And just pull those curls down. So you can see the difference there with one side versus the other. If you find the end of the curls look like they've come straight or come out, grab your fingers and then twirl it around and it kind of goes back into the same curled shape. Also, if there's any sort of kinks like this, you can take it out with a tiny bit of steam if you want. I wasn't still happy with the curls, so I just took the hair dryer and kept going around it. I would also pay attention to the hairs underneath. They'll obviously stay curled because the heat's not reaching them first. You might need to section off the top of the wig and then do the underneath. Okay, so I'm now happy with the curl and what I'm going to do here is there's not a lot of height on the top of the head and she does have a tiny bit of height there. At the moment, the roots of this wig are going sort of left and right. They're just flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift them upwards and then it'll look like there's more volume at the root. So the way to do that, I just add some dry heat again. It's very minimal. It won't affect it too much. I can't take the steamer to this because it might take out some of the curl. You can stick your tail comb underneath and kind of keep the shape. I usually just use my fingers and just pull it upwards. And you can see I'm kind of doing this motion. It means that there won't be any kinks or anything. It just kind of keeps to a nice round shape. The volume at the top of your head is not a lot. It's just very minimal again. So that's why I'm doing this. So you can see the difference with both sides. 
Now I can do the other side of the wig. If you really wanted to use a steamer to do this, you could obviously do it as the first step. So when you're curling it, it will already have height at the root. But that's completely up to yourself. So at this stage, I'm happy with the height, but I feel like the front of this hair is coming forward when it should be kind of pulled back. So we need to train those roots again by adding more heat. So what I'm going to do is pull this hair back away from the hairline, use some heat and then let it sit. I don't want to lose that nice height that I've already got, so I'm just going to pull that up with my fingers. You can see it's now off the face, which is what we wanted. So this is our wig at the moment. I like how it looks. I'm obviously going to go back at the end and just fix anything if I think it's too curly or anything like that. However, we've still to do the most exciting part of the wig, which is adding the braids at the front of the wig. If you look at reference photos of Black Widow, you can see there's not one braid, but there's two. They're both on the left section of the head and they take up maybe like a third of that side. So I'm sectioning the hair from the hairline down to maybe like where the ear would sit. If you make your section roughly the same size as mine, you can't really go wrong. You can see I've made the part in here not too straight. This means it looks more natural and also helps hide some of the lacing underneath. So now that I know how big this section is, I'm going to divide this into two. One for the first braid and one for the second braid. I find that looking at pictures, the braid at the front looked a bit bigger than the one at the back just slightly, so I try and make the front section just that little bit bigger. You can see I'm playing about the hair a lot just trying to work out. I'm actually feeling the weight of the wig in my hands and that can help me decide if it's kind of the right amount. So now I'm happy with my first section and I'm going to start with the braiding. So now I have this front section, I just brush it right out. This is to make it a little bit more easier to braid. I feel like if it's in lots of curled section, you just won't get the same effect. So I'm showing you my first attempt and sort of the issues with it. Basically because I was standing next to the wig and not behind it, the braid is actually too far forward. I need it pulled more back the way. So if I pull it back, you can actually see what I mean. So after this first attempt, I just undid everything and redid it, changing my body position and pulling the hair towards the back. The two braids that Black Widow has are French braids. We braid it in such a way that it's closer to the scalp at the top. To start a French braid, take the tail comb and create a little triangle just at the front of the hair. Take that small section and split it into three equal parts. Make sure these sections are as equal as you can get them. Use your fingers to separate the sections. Take the very front section and pass it under the middle one so that the front section is now the middle section. Take the back section and pass that underneath so that that's now the middle section. Now since this is a French braid, before passing the hairline section forward, we then pick up a little bit of hair from underneath. Make sure you do it from the hairline backwards. Add that to the section and pass that underneath so that that's now the middle section. You then take the back section, take hair straight from the parting underneath, don't go too far down, add it to the section and pass that underneath and that's the new middle section. Continue this process all the way down the front of the hair. When you're doing this, obviously I've showed you what, what went wrong with the first attempt, make sure you're angling your hair backwards and that means that it won't want to fall forward, it'll be tighter at the scalp and it'll want to sort of sit there further back. Once you've added all the hair into the braid and there's none left to add, just continue plaiting it down until you get to the end and then secure with a bobble. Now I want to show you what else can go wrong with these braids and that obviously you can see that there's a bit of a droopy section right at the front. The reason for that is I've taken hair from too far down. You want to make sure you don't do that and the hair's coming from like right under the braid. That means you won't get like big droopy sections like that at the front. You want it all neat and tidy at that front part. So if you find this has happened, just undo the braid up until the point you were happy with and just redo it. So you can see, even though it's not perfect, it does look a lot better. 
So we've completed the first braid and now we're going to do the second braid which was sectioned out before. We're doing the exact same process, we take a little small triangle from the top. We split that into three equal sections. Use your fingers to separate each section. So I take the front section and pass that underneath, that's the new middle section. I take the back section and do the same, pass it underneath, that's the new section. Going back to the section at the front, I take a small piece of hair, add it to the section, pass that underneath, that's the new middle section. Take a bit from the back, add some hair, pass it underneath, that's the new middle section. So each time you're taking from the front or the back, passing it underneath, and then that's how you get your French braid. So I'm just continuously adding hair into the sections and passing them underneath. I pick up the hair all the way down until there's none left to pick up and just continue the braid all the way down and secure with a bobble. So at this point I just look at the wig and see what changes I want to make. One of them was that there didn't seem to be enough volume on this side so I've just added a bit more volume by adding the hairdryer and making the shape higher. Also in the pictures the end of her braid looks a bit tighter so I went back and just tightened the very end. I also decided to swap out these stretchy bobbles for some elastic ones. Normally you get these elastic bands in black or clear, they're just a little bit more inconspicuous. If you're using these you may need to double up as they do have a tendency to snap over time. You may also notice that I've straightened the ends of these plaits. So I've done the first one and what I'll do is I'll show you how I did the second. Just grab your steamer, pull your braid away from the hair and steam it. You do not want to do it near the wig as you might disrupt the curls. Once you've done that make sure it's not too hot to touch and just pull it with your fingers and maybe even twist it a bit just to get that point. So that's it, we've got our widow's peak, we've got our braids and we've got our loose curls. So now we have our wig and I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial.